Welcome to Tech Fund. We cover the biggest technology trends impacting our lives. My name is Kelly Boss. Now, I'm on a video call right now. I'm using this phone as a prop. But on this video call, I'm on 4G, the wireless network technology that is used when you need faster internet, you know, for your video calls and, you know, virtual interviews and meetings. Now, 4G aside, now 5G is the next wireless network technology that's expected to change the way you live and work. Now, we've been talking about 5G for a while, but finally 5G is in Kenya, thanks to Safaricom. You know where 5G is? It is here. That thing there is symbolic of it. So another round of applause for the launch of Safaricom 5G. But 5G has been on the headlines for a lot of rumors and conspiracies. So to help clear things out, we are going to explain to you what exactly is 5G, the technologies behind it, and who perhaps this tech is meant for. So what exactly is 5G? Well, 5G or fifth generation network is the next step in mobile internet technology. It is faster, able to handle more connected devices than 4G, and has improvements that will enable a new wave of tech products. Let me put this in perspective. When you talk about 5G, it's nothing radically different than our current mobile network technology. The earliest generation mobile network technology, 1G networks, were launched in the 80s, mostly used on big phones, you know, the ones bigger than your one liter water bottle. Unlike the other generations, the 1G network used analog signals and could only do voice calls. 2G network was a big upgrade. More bandwidth allowed users to make calls, send texts, and pictures. In fact, 2G could allow users to access basic internet like on the first iPhone. 3G came out faster. Some of us still use them. But 4G came and made downloading and streaming seamless. Today with the 5G, whether you are at home, at throat, outside or outdoor, or in a stadium, in a mall like Yaya Center, you will have a consistent service of the 5G. That is built into the 5G design as of today. In 2015, the target of the 5G design was to connect 7 billion people and 70 billion things. 70 billion things, it means that for each of us, the prediction is we'll have 10 smart devices per, per person. What does it mean that we'll have smart watches, smart devices, smart homes? Those are all connected on the 5G technology. But what else other than that? The low latency of the 5G, Martin, you mentioned that one as well. It's how quick the application and the service will react to your requirement. And this makes a huge difference with the 5G technology. The other thing that was on the network slicing, I don't want to talk technical things, but on the slicing, it means that I'm giving a dedicated network for each of us, for each entity. To Mr. Peter Nidegwa or Mr. Michael Joseph will be giving a dedicated slice of the network, meaning that nobody is sharing it. To the media will be giving a slice uh, for their services and broadcasting. To Yaya Center or in a stadium in a football match, I will give you a slice of a network that is dedicated for you. This makes a huge difference with the 5G. And we have done that and demonstrated that two months ago with Safaricom. It was the first in Africa to introduce the 5G slicing technology. The other thing, it's not yet there, but the promise of the 5G that the smart devices will connect for years on a single charge, meaning that one battery life charge will take you for, for years, not for days as of today. This is something very unique for, for 5G. Now, every network generation has come with its special features to advance how we use mobile network technology. 2G, for example, introduced text and made a huge impact on how we communicate. 3G came with data and internet, making it easier to access emails and nearly everything on the go. 4G came with a promise of HD streaming and video communication that was a hack during the pandemic. In fact, life-changing. But just how will 5G change our lives? Is 5G a reality today? Yes, certainly. We have 1 billion, close to 1 billion subscribers being connected on 5G today. By next year, we're looking at 2 billion connected 5G subscribers worldwide. How would it change our life, the 5G? If we look at the journey of the technologies from the second generation 20 years ago, it introduced the voice and the messaging, and it made a huge difference in how we communicate. The 3G came with data and internet, and now we are having all our applications like email and chatting on our mobile phone on the move. 4G came with a promise of the high definition streaming. Now that we are seeing Netflix, YouTubes, and others, on our mobile phones, but as well the video communications. Who would have believed that the COVID would come and we don't have this capability of the 4G to communicate on video stream? It wouldn't have been possible 
uh, thanks to the 4G. Who would have imagined 20 years ago that you could call your family that is 3,000 kilometers away on a video call face to face? This was a, a science fiction 20 years ago. So all the generation that came, it made a huge difference. And the 5G is no, no different than that. The 5G, and this is more about practical examples. Last year in the event of Safaricom, we have introduced the hologram. This is when P Mr. Uh, Peter Nedegwa, he was on stage and talking he, to his team in Kisumu, and it felt so real that the team is standing right in front of us on the stage. Hologram, it's not science fiction again. Today in the uh, presidential election of France, of India, of Philippines, of, Indone of Indonesia, they are using the holograms. Even in concert, musical concert, we have seen Tupac, who died in 1996. They revived him again on stage with a hologram in 20, 2012 with Snoop Dogg. That was insane. But to us as users, we'll see that we are getting the fiber-like connectivity at home, anywhere and everywhere. Meaning that today, if you're a gamer, a professional gamer, and you are download, uh, downloading uh, Call of Duty, it's 200 gig. Usually it will take days. days. On 5G, we're talking about minutes to download those kind of games on your console. Personally, when I upload my videos on YouTube, I prefer to go to home to do the upload, right? But today with the 5G, you can do it in a matter of seconds from your mobile phone anywhere. On the video calls, today we are using a lot of Teams, Zoom, WebEx, you name it. Those big players, they are working on developing virtual headset and virtual reality headset to engage with the end user. That you are talking to the other people right in front of you as if it's actually real. They will be handing you over engines or tools or other things on the virtual reality and you will be engaging with them. This is not far-fetched. We are looking at one or two years that we will see this in the market. You might have seen the video in, uh, on Twitter with regards to Amazon how the Amazon warehouse is functioning and how it's fulfilling our orders. Hundreds of robots being around the warehouse, being coordinated by a network, a reliable network like the 5G, to coordinate those robots together to fulfill our orders. This is only one example, but a personal example that I have seen in Kenya, while being in Limuru for the tea plantation last year, I've met some of the farmers and they told me about the tea quality of Kenya has degraded over the last year. Why is that? Because they are using machines to harvest the tea plant. And what happens, it takes not the tip of the tea plant, it takes the stem on top of that. And that degrades a lot the, the tea quality and the taste. Imagine that those machines, hundreds of those machines going into the Limuru tea plantation farm, coordinated by the 5G, with artificial intelligence, it will be able to pick the tip of the tea plant to give the best quality. That is a very practical example that we can see from the 5G to the industry and to the enterprise. When Safaricom launched, few had the privilege of testing the new technology and the result, really fast internet speed. So what you are seeing with the previous generations, if I just look at the immediate previous one, uh, 4G, you'd get speeds of about uh, 30 to 50 megabits per second. With 5G average, you'll see the speeds being in the range of 250 to 350 megabits per second, but can go as high as uh, 1 gigabit per second. That's 1,000 megabits per second, which is insanely fast. So this is just to enable people who are living on the digital world uh, to power the digital economy to do much more uh, with what they, they need on the internet. So far, we've had uh, a number of devices. We've had some Samsung, uh, Huawei, Oppo uh, devices, a couple of them that are already enabled. So what the manufacturers do is that they take our network setting, prepare an update, and you'll just receive a software update on your phone. And once you do it on a 5G-capable phone, then you'll be able to connect to their 5G network and enjoy the service. Almost home, but Elliot is still in the lead. <laughs> this 5G is not oh. working. <laughs> Elliot is still in the lead. Peter's catching up. Peter's catching up. Speaking during the launch, Safaricom CEO Peter Ndegwa broke down the advancements made by the company in making sure this technology is available and the type of devices that support 5G. 
And for homes and businesses, there's something called 5G Wi-Fi. We, the way to deliver internet coverage is to make sure the network exists, which, which we have invested a lot. The second is handsets. Only one out of three Kenyans own a 4G device, and we'll talk about 5G in a minute. So that's the other big area of focus. Uh, there's about 15 million people who have 2G devices. They cannot enjoy the speeds we are talking about or the internet access unless uh, we provide those. So that's the other big area that we'll be focusing on. Uh, so starting today, uh, customers, and this is to bring it to at a practical level because there are so many elements that will come into the future. Customers in 5G ready areas can now enjoy fast and reliable internet connectivity for their homes and businesses. Customers using supported 5G smartphones uh, uh, will be able to access the 5G network in covered areas, only in covered areas, and browse at super fast 5G speeds. Some people might start moving houses <laughs> just to access 5G. Plans are already underway to provide 5G data packages for mobile internet, uh, which will be ready by December. Uh, but the home ones will be uh, ready uh, immediately. So supported uh, smartphones, because we know a smartphone, f smartphone or 5G enabled smartphones are still uh, at a low level. S supported smartphones include 5G enabled devices from Samsung Galaxy S. I think my wife would really <laughs> be happy with this. Uh, and Fold series, as well as the Huawei and Oppo 5G devices. I think. You guys must have put this in my, my notes, uh, Will. Um, for iPhones, people like me who use iPhones, by the way, uh, for iPhone users like me, the select 5G capable some, and for iPhones, uh, for iPhone users, and select 5G uh, capable Samsung devices will have to wait for a software upgrade uh, or update later in the year to access the 5G network. This is not a safari issue. For homes and businesses, we have a wireless connectivity solution dubbed 5G Wi-Fi. To enjoy this product, and this is when you need to take note, you need to be in a 5G ready zone. You can find out if you are in a 5G ready zone by visiting internet.safaricom.co.ke. Uh, and I'm sure we'll also put it in our apps. Um, existing 5G uh, zones are spread across Nairobi, Kisumu, Kisi, Kakamega, and uh, Mombasa. They forgot my county. <laughs> uh, once you have confirmed 5G coverage in your area, you can purchase the 5G router at uh, 25,000, so it's, uh, plus a set up fee of 5,000, or sign up to a 36 month contract, which you receive uh, the router all included uh, within the package that you sign up. In the last few years, according to the Communications Authority Director General Ezra Shiloba, the government has been involved in the process of developing a 5G roadmap. He says the election came in the way of the launch and called Safaricom's move a precursor of the major event to roll out 5G in the country. In the last few years, we've been involved in the process of developing what we call the 5G uh, roadmap. We were just about to launch the, the 5G roadmap for the country. But then, of course, elections came, uh, and here we are. So with Safaricom launching its uh, commercial 5G business, this is a precursor of a, a major event that we're looking forward to, which is now providing the national framework in terms of how the sector is going to operate and as far as the rollout of the 5G uh, is concerned. We really uh, are pleased that you've taken the initiative to start us off in this market. Remember a couple of years ago, of course, we allocated some spectrum uh, through refarming to allow you to undertake some pilot to see the possibilities that the network brings. And the fact that you've taken the step to launch the commercial component of this it basically proves that you are confident about the future of, of, this, um, uh, uh, of this network and the future of the business in the new world of 5G. Something else I have to mention, other than the individual experiences, the 5G potential for the industrial setup is going to be immense. And here we're talking about the vertical 
use uh, of, of, of the network. So the challenge from an enterprise perspective is not just about us who are here. Uh, perhaps, Peter, you'll have to have another event where you'll bring in uh, players from other uh, sectors, the manufacturing sector. Uh, we were discussing this morning uh, the shipping, uh, the port operations, the hospital players, you know. It is basically a new customer base in terms of how we can deploy and utilize the 5G. So, from where we are, uh, a regulatory point of view, I think we really uh, elated by this opportunity and to be here to be able to be uh, talking about the future of uh, connectivity and, uh, and uh, the potential it has for our country. Now this week was huge for tech. Google Kenya turned 15 and to celebrate this they had a beautiful event featuring their creators and some of the testimonials were really inspiring. And how big was the event? So big the president attended. You can imagine you were just doing what you love on YouTube and then you meet the president. Techfile had an opportunity to speak exclusively to Google's country director for Kenya and East Africa Agnes Gadaya. She started by saying, quote, Google's mission is not complete if Kenya is not part of that mission. Today we celebrated 15 years of Google in Sub-Saharan Africa. This was the first office uh, opened up in Sub-Saharan Africa and from here we spread out to other countries uh, including Lagos, Ghana and South Africa. It's always very important to stop and take stock of where you have reached. 15 years is a big milestone. Google itself is only 24 years old. So very early in its startup existence, it made uh, an intentional decision to set up in Africa. Based on our mission, our mission is never complete if, uh, if Africa is not included. As we organize the world's information and make it universally accessible, if Africa is not part of that universal, our mission is not complete. Indeed, it is not complete if Kenya is not part of that mission. So we spent 15 years working to try and ensure that we are able to build access, access through infrastructure development in the country. We've done that in quite a number of different ways, including working with government. Um, just right now, we actually have contractors on the ground on 91 different government facilities, um, hospitals that are level four, uh, we have 68 uh, courts, uh, um, courts across the country. Uh, that translates to 300, over 300 courtrooms. And we also have uh, health centers. So we have health centers, we have the judiciary, and we have TVET institutions that we are helping connect. Over and above that, once we've connected and provided access to the internet, um, how do people then, you and I, reach it. We all know the transformational nature of accessing the internet. The first time you went to the internet, it probably changed your outlook on life. And it opened a whole brand new world to you of information. So we want that same experience for every single Kenyan and every single African. So we work day and night with our partners through our Android platform to ensure that all our different partners who build off the Android platform are able to provide phones to this market that are not only good quality but are also affordable. Every one of the testimonials at the event had two things in common. They were young and they do what they love and make money. So just how can you take such opportunities? So we chose the people who are going to come and give testimonials very deliberately. A lot of people when they go to YouTube, they go and see big stars, right? Big names. And we welcome them and we love them completely. Every single person who stood on this stage is a young person, passionate about a thing, has sat down and consistently develops content and puts it on YouTube. And over the years, they have now reached a point where they are not only monetizing, but they are making a fantastic income from it. We had from Rosina. Rosina Sharon has more followers, has over 700,000 uh, sub, uh, subscribers on YouTube. 
Rosina does makeup in five minutes, she does gloves, but we saw where she started from in 2017. Even the type of phone she was using did not have a very clear video, if you go see her first videos. Yeah. But she's able, she's been able to earn, she's been able to invest in herself, she hires people, she's an employer. And she told us here, she's a CEO of her company. That is somebody who, has, who is self-actualized and has become self-actualized because of using YouTube. We heard from the gentleman who's, who's a journalist, yeah, he has 10 full-time people and many, many, many other freelance journalists across the country. He has been able to do this journalism, it's his passion, he has set up a, a, a YouTube uh, channel and he has a large enough a number of followers by his own words that he's making good money, better than a CS, he told us. <laughs> And we had other examples of amazing young people. If you look at the average age of everybody who came on stage, they're all very young. They're in their mid to late 20s, and they're very comfortable. And the rallying call there was don't wait. If you're passionate about anything, get a phone, start talking to the world, put it online. Within a very short period of time, after you've encouraged your friends and family to subscribe, you should be able to monetize the channels and start making a, you know, a reasonable income. I keep telling people, somebody is going to appreciate your content. And the good thing is they don't have to be your, the, your neighbor, your villager, it can be somebody across the world, right? But they will appreciate your content. So that's my rallying call to young people in this country. Now about mobile network technology, the transition from 2G to 3G or 3G to 4G solved nearly the same problems in tech, internet speed. The only difference is we are now on our phones much more than we used to be 10 years ago. That's why internet speed has become more important right now. But the key thing according to The Verge is 5G and the technologies around it aren't really new. It's just our perspective and reliance on our phones that's really changed. My name is Kelly Boss. Thank you for watching Tech File and keep watching Faking News.